With Monster Hunter World Iceborne comes Master Rank, a challenge that will test every hunter, but with the right gear and builds, hunters can overcome anything. I'm Darkblade, and we're back with even more amazing builds for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at full set beginner builds for the Greatsword. The Greatsword is one of the hardest hidden weapons in the game, however, it is considered one of the slowest as well. But, the more experience the hunter gets with monster movements, the more they can capitalise on this weapon's heavy hits. The builds I use tend to capitalise on increasing the damage of the build, as well as try to counteract some of its shortcomings. Now a disclaimer for this series though, as Iceborne is still young, most hunters may not have had time to farm everything they need for the most high end game builds. So this series will instead focus on full set beginner builds, highlighting some of the amazing armour designs while at the same time helping new Iceborne players get through to the end of the main story. As a result, these builds will not feature Elder Dragon loot or augmentations, and the customization will come in the form of different jewels, charms and weaponry. So the first build I use is the Bear Totus Ice build. With the buff to elemental damage in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, Greatswords can now capitalise on using elemental weapons more than they could in the base version of Monster Hunter World. This build demonstrates a fantastic ice build that is great for beginners. It comes with damage skills and on top of that it comes with tons of quality of life skills as I've championed the Beotodus build quite a bit. So for this you'll need the entire Beotodus set which includes the Beohelm Alpha, Mel Alpha, Vambraces Alpha, Coil Alpha and Grease Alpha. I'm also using an Attack Charm 4 which will be an Attack Charm 3 if you're going through Monster Hunter World Iceborne's story for the first time. And for my weapon I'm using the Xiphius Gladius which is the Frozen Kingfish Longsword found from the event quest trophy fishing. The trophy fishing event quest has been available for quite some time now so most players should be able to get their hand on it. Alternatively you can use pretty much any other ice greatsword in the game with this build and still get the same results. As for your jewels you've only got a few to play around with here and of course depending on your jewel collection you may have to switch them out. Firstly I've gone for tenderizer jewels to max out the weakness exploit skill, I've then gone for charger jewels to increase the focus skill and finally I've gone for an attack jewel to increase the attack boost skill. This is also to represent that you'll need an attack jewel if you've only got the attack charm to level 3. So if you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina which will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 1296 with white sharpness. You have 5% affinity which will be 55% affinity when you're on a hunt and you're attacking monster weak points and those said weak points have been tenderized first. You have an ice rating of 860 and when it comes to your defense you're strong against ice, dragon, neutral against water but weak to fire and thunder. As for the skills, you have earplugs at level 5. Earplugs is a wonderful quality of life skill, allowing a hunter to ignore monster roars. Monster roars will normally stun lock a hunter, preventing them from moving, but at level 5 it means that a hunter can completely ignore any monster roar, allowing you to continue your assault or potentially back off and heal. It basically gives hunters freedom of movement when a monster is performing their roar animation. Anyway, you'll have attack boost level 5, although this will only be level 4 if you're going through Monster Hunter World story for the first time. Attack boost increases the raw damage of our build, but on top of that, once you get to level 4, it also grants you 5% bonus affinity. You have ice attack level 5. It would have been nice to max this out. Ice attack increases the ice rating and damage of this build. You have health boost level 3. Health boost increases our maximum health to that potential 200. You have weakness exploit level 3. Weakness exploit allows us to increase our affinity by a set percentage when we're attacking monster weak points. This is increased even further when you've tenderized those monster weak points first through clutch claw attacks. You have focus level 2. Focus is wonderful for the great sword. It's a great quality of life skill allowing you to charge up your charge attacks a little bit more quickly. You have aquatic polar mobility at level 2 which reduces the movement restriction when moving through water and deep snow. This is a byproduct of our gear. And you'll have Stamina Surge level 1. Stamina Surge increases the rate at which we recover stamina. So as you can see, this is a great all-round build so long as you're going against monsters who are weak to the ice element. That is the only real downside of this build in that it's not a universal build that can be used against every monster quite effectively. Nonetheless, it has wonderful offensive skills thanks to the attack boost, ice attack and weakness exploit and it also has great defensive and quality of life skills thanks to earplugs, health boost and the focus skill. As I've said multiple times in previous videos, the Bear Toter set is probably one of the best beginner sets to craft. But anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is a little bit of a quirky build, which is the Clockwork Sleep build. This makes use of the entire Clockwork set, which is crafted from taking part in the Steamworks minigame in Saliana, and as a result, 
allows you to get the Bombardier skill to level 5, which can normally only get to level 3. This means it's a wonderful bomber build, so I've combined this with a sleep weapon for a quirky sleep bomber build. So for this you'll need the entire clockwork set, which includes the clockwork helm beta, mail beta, braces beta, coil beta and greaves beta. Again I'm using an attack charm 4, which will be an attack charm 3 if you're going through the story for the first time. And for my weapon I'm using the Nyx Razor 2, which is found in the Nightshade Paolumu Greatsword Tree. As for your jewels, you've got a few to play around with here, not many. Firstly I've gone for bomber jewels to max out the bombardier skill. I've then gone for vitality jewels to give us a maxed out health boost skill. One of these came with a brace byproduct. I've then gone for a charger jewel to give us a little bit of focus. I've then gone for tenderizer jewels for that weakness exploit, a challenger jewel to increase our agitator skill, and finally some sleep jewels to increase the sleep rating of this build. So, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 1282 with white sharpness. You have 5% affinity, which will be 55% affinity when you're on a hunt and attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized first. You have a sleep rating of 600, and when it comes to your defense, you're strong against fire, water, and thunder, but weak to ice and dragon. As for the skills, you'll have Bombardier level 5. Bombardier increases the damage of our explosive bombs. You have attack boost level 4, agitator level 4. Agitator is a wonderful skill in Iceborne. When a monster becomes enraged, it basically increases our raw attack and affinity. And thanks to the Clutch Claw, you're able to pretty much control when a monster becomes enraged. You have Health Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Part Breaker level 3. This is a byproduct of the gear, but allows us to destroy monster parts a little bit more easily. You have Sleep Attack level 2. This would have been good to get higher, but we had limited jewels at the time of this video. Sleep Attack increases the sleep rating of this build, as well as the build up. You have critical boost level 1, this is a byproduct of the gear but increases the damage of our critical hits on a monster. You have focus level 1 and finally flinch free level 1. Flinch free is a byproduct of our jaws but helps prevent knockback from minor monster attacks or allied players. Finally for the set bonus you will have the commission's alchemy bombardier secret allowing us to get the bombardier skill from level 3 to a maximum of level 5. So as you can see it is a build built all around bombs and putting a monster to sleep. The Great Sword also naturally has probably the best wake up attack in the game, maybe only beaten by the Heavy Bowgun Sniper Shot, but if there's a Great Sword player on your team, most of the time you'll want to let them do the wake up. So the idea behind this build was to put a monster to sleep, put some bombs down, perform the Great Sword wake up attack that hits the monster first, then the bomb second. Also, making use of the Apothecary Mantle can definitely help with this, as well as having your Palico use a sleep weapon. But nonetheless, this was a quirky, niche, fun build to use that is slightly different to the normal Greatsword playstyle. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Tigrex all-round build. Whether you like to pronounce it Tigrex or Tigrex, this set is a wonderful build that can be used against any monster. It has DPS skills, defensive skills, and wonderful quality of life skills. So for this, you'll need the entire Tigrex set, which includes the Tigrex Helm Beta, Male Beta, Braces Alpha, Tacit's Beta and Grease Beta. I'm also using an Exploited Charm too. And for my weapon, I'm using the Tigrex Greatsword. As for your jewels, you've only got a few to play around with here. Firstly, I've gone for Vitality Jewels to max up the Health Boost skill. I've then gone for an Elementalist Jewel for that non-elemental boost skill. Earplug Jewel to max out the Earplug skill. A Tenderizer Jewel to max out Weakness Exploit. And then finally, I've gone for Sated Expert Jewels to give us Critical Eye, as well as the Free Meal skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which would be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1,541 with White Sharpness. You have no percent affinity, which will actually be 50% affinity when you're on a hunt and attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized first. And finally, you'll have no element. As for your defense, you're strong against fire, neutral to water and ice, but unfortunately weak to dragon and thunder. As for the skills, you have earplugs level 5, again providing us with that wonderful quality of life skill. You have attack boost level 4, health boost level 3, critical eye level 3. Critical eye increases our affinity by a set percentage, and critical eye at level 3 counteracts the negative affinity that the Tigrex greatsword has. You have Weakness Exploit level 3, Free Mill level 3. Normally Free Mill can only get to level 1, but thanks to the Tigrex set bonus we can get it to level 3. Free Mill allows us to consume potions and other consumables with a chance of actually not consuming it. You have Speed Eating level 3. This is a byproduct of the gear. Speed Eating allows us to consume potions at a very quick pace. And finally you will have Non-Elemental Boost level 1. 
non-elemental boost increases the attack of our weapon so long as the weapon has a element or element that is hidden as is the case with the Tigrex Greatsword. As for the set bonuses, you'll have the Tigrex Essence Free Mill Secret, which allows us to get the Free Mill skill to level 3 up from just level 1. So there you have it. As you can see, it is a little bit of an all-rounder build, having defensive skills, offensive skills, and quality of life skills. Obviously, this is also a great build to go through the game for the first time, as the Free Mill skill will allow you to save on various potions and that. The main downside about this build, though, is it does lack the Focus skill which means that it will take a little bit longer to charge up your weapon. Nonetheless, this build hits hard and can potentially see you through to the end of the game. But anyway, let's move on to our fourth and final build, which is the Fogel Angina Thunder build. This is another demonstration of a DPS focus build that uses elemental attacks. In this case, it's the Thunder element. Unlike the Beartodus Ice build though, this one is a lot more DPS focused and doesn't have as many quality of life skills. So for this you'll need the entire Fogel Anginaf set which includes the Fogel Helm Beta, Mel Beta, Van Braces Alpha, Coil Alpha and Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Handicraft Charm 4 which will be a Handicraft Charm 3 if you're going through Monster Hunter World Story for the first time although it won't make too much of a difference with this build. And for my weapon I'm using the Fogel Ration's Edge which is the great sword found in the Fogel Anginaf tree. As for your jewels, you don't have many to play around with. Firstly, I've gone for Charger Jewels to max out the Focus skill. Two of these came with byproducts in the form of Vitality Jewels. I've added an extra Vitality Jewel as well to max out the Health Boost skill. I've then gone for a Bolt Jewel for some extra Thunder Attack, an Expert Jewel for some Critical Eye, and finally a Sharp Jewel to provide us the Protective Polish skill. So, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 Health, 100 Stamina, which will be 200 Health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1320 with white sharpness. You have 35% affinity, which will be 85% affinity when you're on a hunt and you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized first. You have a thunder rating of 500. And as for your defense, you're strong against thunder, neutral against dragon, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. As for the skills, you have thunder attack level five, thunder attack increases the thunder rating and damage of this build. It would have been nice to get this higher. And if you wanted to, you could potentially drop a point in the health boost skill to max this out but it all depends if you want that reduced health pool. Anyway, you'll have Handicraft level 4, although this will only be level 3 if you're going through the story for the first time. Handicraft increases the sharpness of the weapon we're using. You have Health Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Focus level 3, Item Prolonger level 3. Item Prolonger is a byproduct of the gear. Basically, buffs from potions and that last longer when you have this skill. And this also works in conjunction with the Protective Polish skill, which we'll talk about in a minute. You also have Critical Eye level 2, Stun Resistance level 1, a byproduct of the gear but helps resist stun effects. You have Flinch 3 level 1, and finally you'll have Protective Polish level 1. Protective Polish allows us to put a protective coating over our sharpness gauge, preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. This duration of time, however, is increased thanks to the Item Prolonger skill. And finally, you'll have the Anginaft Dominance set bonus stamina cap up, increasing our maximum stamina to 200 after we've taken all our relevant consumables. So as you can see, this is a elemental build that is more DPS orientated than the Beartodus Ice build. Of course, this means you have to take into account a monster's elemental weaknesses, so it's not a universal build. But nonetheless, if a monster is weak to thunder, then this build tears them down quite quickly. So there we have it, those are beginner full set builds that I use for the Greatsword in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now of course there are a lot more end game mix sets to come, and as I always say you don't have to use what is shown in these videos. Use what you want to use as most tasks in Monster Hunter World Iceborne can be taken on with any item or gear set. Also builds taken from previous seasons can still work in Iceborne, at least for early game. They'll have the DPS but they may lack the survivability. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative, and until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you beginner Iceborne builds that I use for the Greatsword in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.